And right now it's time for that time when we have our special guest. Tonight's special guest is Swami Ramakrishna on a brief visit to New Zealand. The Swami is a disciple of Arma, the hugging saint. To find out more about Arma, we invited the Swami to our studios to tell us all about this extraordinary woman. We welcome Swami Ramakrishna as our special guest on The Beat Goes On. Swami Ramakrishna, welcome to The Beat Goes On. Thank you very much. Good Thank to you. see you. <laughs> Good to see you too. Traveling the world. <laughs> yes. Wonderful life. It's a wonderful job because I'm doing what my guru asked me to do. So that, that's what makes me happy. So uh, for our viewers, before we continue any further, let's find out who your guru is and why, you, wh and why you are here in New Zealand. So let's start with your guru. Okay. Her name is Ama. Is that correct? Uh, Ama. The Western media calls her as the Hugging Saint. The Hugging Saint. Uh, her, her official name is Martha Amritanandamahi. Mm -hmm. She's... Uh, Could you say that slowly? <laughs> Martha yeah. Amritanandamahi. Yeah. Devi. That's her name. It's a long name. But she is known as a spiritual leader and a great humanitarian. Her name is Amma, and it's no coincidence that in her native language, that means mother. She's ushered through the crowd. Many are pushing in, hoping just to touch her. That's because Amma has gained near superstar status among her followers around the world through the simple act of hugging. That's what all these people have come here for. And when it becomes clear that Amma is ready to begin, there's a rush to the stage. Many pilgrims become deeply emotional once they finally reach her. But Amma remains cool, doling out hugs, albeit quickly. There are more than 200,000 people gathered here tonight. Some have traveled from around the world to see Amma. She's not selling salvation or prosperity or physical healing. The only thing she says she offers is love. It appears that Amma has tapped into something essential, a universal quest and deep yearning for affection and the human touch. That's exactly what brought Cam here tonight. She's traveled to India all the way from California to see Amma, and she's seen her 30 times before. Cam says just a few seconds with Amma gives her a dose of what's missing in her own life. The hug from Amma is, is complete. It's 100% unconditional love for all of time. Now, she has millions, it's well millions of followers yes, throughout the world. Yes, of course, all over the world, yeah. And uh, she's been, been doing it for years, but it's slowly growing and growing right. and growing. So when did you first see the Hugging Saint and say uh, yourself, oh, that's wonderful? It was in 1978, so it's 32 years back I met her. Yeah. I was working in a bank uh, near her village. That's how I came to know her. This is in India? India. In yes. India. Mm. But I just happened to uh, hear about her through a customer in the bank. Mm. He asked me whether I would be interested to see the, see the yeah. saint. But yeah. those days she was not known as saint. Yeah. People didn't know about her, about her at all. Yeah. So she was just as an ordinary everyday uh, person. Yeah, everyday at, person at that time. Yeah, but she had some, uh, you know, what do you call it? Some extraordinary um, oh. power, mm -hmm. which the villagers were quite aware of. Mm -hmm. Slowly, people started coming. The word spread out. Then slowly, more and more people started coming. So when I came to know, uh, it was 1978. Mm -hmm. So this customer asked me whether I would like to meet this, mm -hmm. meet her. So, you went along and, and uh, saw her? Once I met her, everything changed. I didn't want to go back. And you left the bank? I, 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 I left the I worked for six more years. Yes. Because there was some family responsibilities. I didn't want to mm. you know, give up the, the responsibilities, or run away from the responsibilities. So, Amma also advised me, just stay in your job for some more time. Mm. Then, uh, when I thought my responsibility was over, I quit the job and then... I've been staying permanently in the ashram. So that's pretty amazing, isn't it? That here you are going about your life as a bank clerk and you go along to one meeting and your life changes. It changed, yeah. Your whole life changes. <laughs> yeah. 
Now, we could look at it from a point of view, we could say that you were a spiritual type of person anyway and were going to be influenced by her, or you were non-spiritual and she had this powerful force. What, what do you think it was? Yeah, I was not, I, I, I cannot say that I was spiritual mm -hmm. in the sense I was religious. You were religious? Yeah. yeah. Because uh, religious means I was observing some religious uh, um, disciplines. I used to do my prayers, mm -hmm. that's all. Not a spiritual. What do you think that power is? What, what do you think it is? It's, it's, it's wonderful, isn't it? Because, I mean, she's got millions of followers yeah. today, so it's just continued on and on. Uh, is there any way to describe it? I would say it's the power of her love. Mm. The tremendous power, strength, the power of her love, which really transformed me. Their unconditional love, her care, her compassion for other people, mm. treating everyone equally, equal vision, those are some other things. And their spiritual uh, power is also there. You know? Let's have a little bit of history about Amma. How did, how did it all start for her? She was a young girl and uh, found she had this, this influence on people? Or? Uh, right from the birth, she was very extraordinary. She was an extraordinary person and spending a lot of time you know, praying to God. She, she composed songs on God even when she was four years old. And then she used to say that from the very young age that she knew that everything is God. There's nothing other than God in this world. Amma is the daughter of a poor fisherman and a member of one of the lowest castes in India. As a girl, she says she spent hours in meditation and would sing devotional chants to God. Because of that, she was considered odd, and her parents, she says, treated her harshly. Undeterred, she began small acts of charity at only seven years old. She had this knowledge about God, or knowledge about one's own consciousness, which is not different from God, according to the Indian tradition. So she had this knowledge, so she was able to feel God and see God in everything. For, um, for her, there is nothing other than God. Mm -hmm. So from the very young age, she would pray to God, spend mo most of the time um, praying to God, singing, composing songs, and uh, she was given a lot of household work to do, and any work she would do with the attitude that it's a service to God. It may be just cooking for her family. It was or, a service to God. Uh, washing the clothes of the family, mm. uh, or cleaning the house. She was able to consider everything as a work of God, so always she was focused on God. In those days, girls would be given away to marriage at the age of 13. So my parents were very much concerned about me, but I was more focused on a spiritual path. And they thought, if this girl keeps on embracing people, nobody will marry her. You were hugging too much. <laughs> From that point on, a career of sorts was lost. And it's quite a lucrative one. Her headquarters here in southern India are grand. Her organization says the money comes from the sales of souvenirs, her personal effects, and contributions. It's hard to pin down exactly how much money there is, but one thing's for certain, she spends a lot on charity, running orphanages, hospitals, schools, and soup kitchens. Here in New Zealand, what are you doing? This was amazing. Just telling people about how wonderful she is, and uh... yeah, just to be a very good thing to meet her. It'll mm. be a, a, a what do you call it, an incomparable experience for them in in their life to meet a person who is pure love, pure goodness, yeah. all goodness, and uh, so compassionate. So it'd be a wonderful opportunity for them to meet meet her. And so would she be visiting New Zealand? She she travels two months in America two months in Europe, about a month in countries like uh, Australia, Singapore, Malaysia. But hugging is still what takes up most of her time. Amma says she's now embraced more than 26 million people and travels to more than 20 countries a year. She doesn't turn anyone away, caring equally for celebrities and the seriously ill. Tina. When people come to see me, I understand how much they are suffering. And when I see their pain, when I see them crying, I wipe their tears. My main goal is to console them and to help them experience peace and love. If you had to put it in a nutshell, what can Amma do for the average person? What, what can she give? 
No, she is able to instill faith in people, you know, whatever religion they may be, and she is able to instill faith in themselves first. Now she she is not asking us to believe in a God who is sit, sitting up in the clouds, uh, and uh, you know, she says your life is not not just for yourself. Whenever you get an opportunity, try to help others, mm -hmm. hmm? be kind to others, be compassionate to others. If you cannot give money, you can give your talent, you can give your time. There are always you can talk nice words and make them happy. So you are this in this birth you make yourself comfortable and as far as possible help others also. So you have faith in you, have faith in God. Uh, be loving and be compassionate to others. That's our message. Well Swami, you've been very kind to me by coming <laughs> to see us on the big Gaza. <laughs> and have a wonderful Thank time you. while you're in New Zealand. Thank uh, you. Appreciate seeing you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.